Let's talk about gut health. Back in 2007, the Human Microbiome Project gave us two very stern warnings, which we pretty much have ignored. And the first warning was that there's something called microbial diversity. And a lack of microbial diversity, which we have as a culture, was linked to a significant compromised response to any immune event like COVID or the bird flu. And a study in Stanford a couple of years ago showed they took um, poop from the mummies in museums in uh, Utah and Arizona and they actually were able to measure the microbiome of this thousand year old poo from these mummies in these museums. And they found that there was such, so many more diverse bacteria in their gut compared to the modern microbiome, that there was such a lack of microbial diversity, they called it an extinction event. Now the second warning was that there's something called horizontal transfer of genetic material. You know, we pass on our genes vertically to our babies and to our children and our offspring. But bacteria can do a horizontal transfer of genetic material. So in other words, a virus comes into your intestinal tract, which happens all the time, and it actually can kind of transfer genetic material with bacteria in your gut. So in other words, let's say the virus, like the bird flu, for example, it comes into your intestinal tract, which is probably already there. And now it's trying to figure out a way how to infiltrate into your intestinal tract. So it's not just only for birds, they wanna figure out a way to get into humans as well. Well, they can actually horizontally grab genetic material from bacteria in your gut who know how to get into your intestinal tract and infiltrate and grab that and then infect you. And that's how they morph and act, figure out a way to actually infect us. And what was interesting about that is they found that the most common source of this horizontal transfer of genetic material was from farm animals, number one. And number two, it wasn't proximity. It wasn't that the bacteria and the virus would just happen to be next to each other. Other, they said it was ecology. It was the environment of the intestinal tract that actually determined whether or not you are going to have this horizontal transfer of genetic material, possibly from farm animals and other possible sources as well. And they said the number one thing that supports gut environment is something called fiber. Now these bacteria have been known about for thousands of years in Ayurvedic medicine. They actually talked about these invisible bacteria called crimi, and they said, you know, these bacteria can be good and they can be harmful. And they actually wrote about the fact that you didn't want to kill them. You wanted to actually change the environment, change the host, change the ecology, which we're just beginning to understand that now. So in Ayurvedic medicine, they talked about how we can actually support the health of your entire digestive system and the environment of your gut because that supports a healthy and diverse microbiome. Now, the key ingredient in this process is fiber. Studies show that the hunter-gatherers had about 100 grams of fiber per day in their diet, the average American 15 or 20. I mean, dramatically less fiber than we should really have. So what does fiber do? When you eat fibrous foods, what they do is they convert the bacteria in your gut, convert them into short chain fatty acids like butyric acid and other ones that actually heal the lining of your gut, support the proliferation of good bacteria, feed the colon cells so they stay strong and healthy, support gut immunity, and much, much more. So a lack of fiber in your diet becomes a real problem. And the kind of fibers that are out there are two kinds. One is soluble fiber and one is insoluble fiber. Soluble fiber is like chia seeds or flax seeds. When you put them in water, they become slimy. My favorite combination to heal the gut is a combination of slippery elm, licorice, and marshmallow root. Um, it's just like a, a viscous tea that you can make and drink and slime and heal and repair like a big Band-Aid over your whole intestinal tract, providing the, providing, the, providing the environment for the proliferation of healthy and good bacteria. Soluble fiber is predominantly harvested in the fall for the winter. It's slimy, it's unctuous, it kind of antidotes the tendency for dryness during the cold, dry winter months. Remember, in Ayurveda, in nature, the harvest is always going to provide the antidote for the extreme of that season, right? So in the winter time, you're going to have 
more soluble fiber grains and seeds that you eat and cook and they become slimy you eat them they coat your intestinal tract well it's that soluble fiber that actually attaches to the bile and takes that bile to the toilet now your bile think of it like a pac-man gobbling up toxins in your intestinal tract cleaning your intestinal villi and if you don't have enough of that fiber then that fiber doesn't attach to the bile it doesn't take the toxins that the bile grabbed onto to the toilet and up to 94 percent of that according to the medical textbooks can get reabsorbed back to your liver dump its trash in the liver and start the process over again and if you don't have enough fiber in your diet your body will actually reuse that same bile up to 17 times until it's finally discarded and then the body has to make new bile this was sort of our genetic way to handle you know you know starvation periods of famine where there just was no food we were able to survive that for long periods of time so it's very important for you to get your soluble fiber mostly in the winter and your insoluble your roughage fiber in the summer because that's the roughage that actually kind of helps you clean out your intestinal tract and have really good and healthy balance they both do but they both do it in a little bit of a different way now studies show that if you have a lot of sugary drinks in your diet more than two sugary sodas or sodas per day it actually alters about nine different species of bacteria it literally removes about nine species of bacteria from your gut and those nine species are specifically in charge of converting the fiber into short chain fatty acids which provide the environment for a healthy and diverse microbiome in another study um, they found that it was a study with twins and they gave one group of twins a high fiber diet of fruits and vegetables and then they gave another group a low fiber diet of more meats and those kind of things and they found that the that the um, the group with the lower fiber diet the meats and the lack of fiber in their diet plant-based things um, had significantly accelerated biological aging in a study that was published in the Journal of Nature they found that when the fiber passes through your intestinal tract it actually um, alters genetic expressions of genes in your body that actually protect you from cancers in your intestinal tract and other cancers so fiber is the key I've written many many articles about fiber soluble fiber and insoluble fiber what fibers to get in the winter how to get prebiotics in your diet to support a healthy proliferation of good and more diverse bugs in your gut go to lifespot.com you know sign up for our newsletter get all this information long form videos like this in your inbox uh, a couple of times a week so you stay abreast of how you can keep your body and your mind and your digestion healthy in Ayurveda it was said that 85 percent of all disease comes from weakness in your digestion and that's something that we're not hearing a lot about we're saying don't eat this don't eat that don't eat wheat don't eat dairy don't eat nuts seeds grains legumes well those harder to digest foods nightshades oxalates all these things in season in the right amounts actually provide just enough irritation to provide the transfer of some of those fibrous foods into good healthy gut bacteria as well as supporting um, the environment that we need for gut immunity if you don't have that little irritation in your gut that hormetic effect of a little bit of irritation provides that irritation to for the body to respond with an immune response and that is your gut immunity that's 70 percent of your immune response so be careful about listening to all this bubble wrap your diet don't eat don't eat don't eat you end up going down this road of eating only a very small amount of food that's a dangerous road to hoe in the world of microbial diversity right which we now know is an extinction event for our modern culture so we have to be careful so learn more about this read the full article get all the science at lifespot.com this article is there for you as well thanks a lot i'm dr john duyard hi everybody i just want to take a minute and tell you what we do here at lifespot.com you know i've been in practice now for 40 years 38 of them have been practicing ayurvedic medicine full-time for the last 20 years i've been writing articles and doing videos on the ancient medical wisdom of ayurveda with the modern science you know if something's been around for a thousand years still practice today and you have modern science to prove it 
Well, I really feel like that's something we should all be taking a look at. And that's what we do at LifeSpot.com. And all that information is for free. So you just go to LifeSpot.com and search in your health topic and you'll get the information, the article that you need, hopefully that will help you. And while you're there, check out our Ayurvedic store. You can get there through LifeSpot.com or go to store.lifespot.com. And there we have all of our organic Ayurvedic herbs, organic skincare line, more books, tapes, knowledge that we give you is all there at our store. All of our cleansing kits are there in our store. All of our herbs are whole herbs with the natural occurring microbiome, the way it came out of the soil. And that's critically important because if I took the bugs out of you, you'd be completely different. We take the bugs away from a plant, like sterilizing and make an extract or spraying your food with pesticides, you lose significant benefit of that plant. And that's why we use the whole plant with the natural occurring microbiome. So check us out, learn more about what we're doing here at lifespot.com and uh, we'll see you again. This recording is brought to you by LifeSpa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at LifeSpa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.